because today we are going to learn about something fun for anyone who feels sick i hope you will get better fast um, uh, don't forget to get some rest for uh, all of you who is feeling you know not in good condition because your situation is bad like there is so much assignment you have to do there is so much problems that you have to face in your life it's okay i know it's hard sometimes but you just need to accept your emotions because you know all of us are human and it's normal to be sad it's normal to be angry it's normal to be tired okay but remember there's Indonesian song songs like this badai pasti berlalu and it's right the storm will pass sooner or later so just follow what Dori said in Finding Nemo just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Let it flow, let it flow. Uh, you uh, have to hold a little more. I know you can do it and never give up, okay? Okay, miss. First of all, uh, please turn on your camera because I want to see your pretty and handsome face. Don't forget to fill the presents. Uh, you can access it uh, on the Edmodo, but I will resend it on the chat too. Wait. I will record your attendance today, so make sure you fill the presets, okay? Um, let's pray together before we start the class. Anyone uh, wants to lead the prayer, please? Yes, can I do it? Yes, you can, Satina. Go ahead. Okay, guys, before we start our class, please pray together. Mm, thank you, Sabina. So, I will congratulate you first because finally, no, you are you are in ninth grade. Yay! You have finished your second year. Uh, you have finished your second year of your junior, junior high school and I know it's uh, not easy I know it's hard to reach this point so I will give you a little appreciation uh, I'm preparing um, some video for for you I hope you will like it wait apakah sudah terlihat? not yet miss it's still one piece already Okay, wait. lesson video and the Edmodo I hope you have watched it before this class 
But I will ask you first. Apakah kalian tahu apa yang akan kita pelajari hari ini? No, please. Hmm, based on a welcoming video yang tadi setelah kita saksikan, today we are going to learn about reproductive system. But we still don't know uh, what is the specific topics of a reproductive system. Let's find out. Uh, ini saya akan share screen lagi ya. So, I have this picture. Ada yang tahu tidak dia siapa? Bayi ini siapa? Who is, the Who is this baby? Kiano, miss. Hmm, you are right, Sabina. This is Kiano. Look at his cheeks. He is so fluffy. I want to pinch it. Do you agree if I say uh, he is so cute? Yeah, so cute. Okay. So, if we talk about a baby, did you ever wonder where do babies come from? From a belly. His mother's belly. Oh, berarti kalian sudah sering ya berpikir dari mana ya bayi itu berasal? Dari mana ya bayi itu berasal? Hmm, seperti itu. So, the baby is come from their parents. Uh, specifically, the baby form when ovum from their mother and sperm cell from their father mix. Oh, it's amazing. These tiny cells can make a human like us. Sel-sel kecil itu yang tidak bisa kita lihat dengan mata kepala kita secara langsung bisa membuat, uh, uh, bisa bertemu dan uh, berkembang menjadi manusia seperti kita. Itu adalah tanda-tanda kekuasaan Tuhan yang perlu kita ketahui dan juga perlu kita syukuri setiap hari. So, uh, before I have mentioned about uh, ovum and sperm cells. Do you know where are the sperm cells or, and the ovum come from? Tidak, dari mana mereka berasal? Ovum sama sel sperma itu dari mana sebenarnya? I don't know. It's okay. Ovum comes from the ovaries. Oh, Laura is clever. You are right. The ovum is come from ovaries and the stem cells come from the testicles. So, the ovaries and testicles are two examples of the human reproductive organs. And there is many more. And today, we are going to learn about that. Welcome to the structure and function of Uh, reproductive class, yay! <laughs> mm, uh, so, I hope you have uh, watched this video before this class because today we are going to explore more about uh, our reproductive system with 3D application. You can install the application from this link. And uh, if you find it difficult uh, to use the application, you can watch my tutorial video, okay? Let's we start our class. Sudah terlihat? Yes. So, we are going to explore our body. Let's start with male reproductive system. Um, I forgot to mention that you have not to be ashamed because uh, of uh, these models, okay? Uh, Miss tahu ada beberapa dari kalian yang merasa risih melihat model ini, but uh, kalian jangan takut dan kalian jangan malu karena tujuan dari pembelajaran kita hari ini is all about knowledge and science. So, okay. This is the model of male reproductive system. Let's start from this organ. This is like egg. Seperti telur ya bentuknya. Setuju tidak? Yes, I agree. Hmm. Nah, this organ uh, can produce the sperm cells. Do you know what's the name of this organ? Tadi sudah uh, miskatakan sebelumnya. Okay, amazing. This is testicles. So, male has a couple of testicles, yang di kanan dan yang di kiri, and each of testicles can produce a million sperm cells. Ooh, itu adalah jumlah yang sangat banyak ya. Dari testis ini bisa dihasilkan jutaan sel sperma. Uh, Besides uh, to produce the sperm cells, 
the testicles can produce the male reproductive hormone called testosterone. Apakah ada anak laki-laki di sini? Belum pada datang ya? Oh, ada. Ada Hisham. Jadi, ketika anak laki-laki pubertas, pasti kan terjadi perubahan fisik. It's true? Hisham? Ya, Suaranya jadi lebih besar, lalu ada kumis, ada rambut-rambut halus di uh, organ-organ tertentu, daerah-daerah tertentu. Nah, itu semuanya disebabkan karena testosteron uh, yang diproduksi oleh testikel. Nah, yang diproduksi oleh testis ini. So, the next organ is epididymis. This is epididymis. Uh, you can see it from the behind. Seperti inilah bentuk dari epididymis dari belakang. Do you know what is the function of epididymis? Irna, maybe you can help me. Um, to make sure and to uh, can I speak in bahasa? Yes, you can. Uh, untuk menyimpan dan mematangkan uh, sel sperma. Yes. Ooh. Give applause to Irna. Woohoo! Irna benar. So, uh, the epididymis function is to bring maturity to the sperm cells and to uh, store the sperm cells for uh, 7 until uh, 14 days. Jadi 7 sampai 14 hari disimpan sementara di sini. After that, we have this slim and long organs. Jika dilihat bentuknya seperti apa ya? Seperti selang, seperti ini juga betul, seperti lembaran mie ayam ya. <laughs> Kuning lagi warnanya uh, di model ini. So, uh, it's right, anak. Ini memang bentuknya terlihat uh, dari luar seperti lembaran mie yang tadi seperti kata Irna. But actually, the function of this structure is uh, similar with the hole, hose, selang, seperti selang. Kenapa? Coba lihat orang tua kalian. Ketika menyiram tanaman di sore hari menggunakan selang, itu kan selang digunakan agar air dari sumbernya bisa mengalir lebih jauh. So, this is the function of uh, these organs to transport the stem cells from epididymis to the urethra. Hmm. Ada yang tahu tidak namanya apa? Nama organ ini apa? Yes, you are true. This is fast difference. So, before the sperm cells come out from the penis, the sperm cell must be accompanied by a liquid that is contains various materials like fructose, um, alkalic liquid, uh, hormones, enzyme, and antibiotics. Nah, uh, liquid itu dinamakan sebagai semen. Dan apakah kalian tahu organ apa yang menghasilkan semen? So, the semen is produced by three accessory glands. The first is this accessory gland. Do you know what is the name of this accessory gland? Maybe. Hmm, Irna, can you help me? Yes. I don't know this. Okay, it's okay. Laura, can you help me? Is it a prostate, Miss? Hmm, it's not the prostate. So this is seminal vesicles. Uh, yang Laura katakan itu. Kalau prostat itu yang ini, the bigger one, and uh, the below of the urinary bladder. Yang Laura katakan, yang namanya kelenjar prostat itu yang ini. So, the last uh, accessory glands is this tiny glands. Do you know what is the name of this tiny glands? Maybe Hisha, can you help me? Do you know what is the name of this uh, accessory gland? This is this one, yang warna hijau. The green one. Yes, the green one. I I don't know this. Okay, it's okay. Um, anyone can help Hisham? I want to 
Okay. Yes, you're right, Laura. This is Bulbureta glands, or uh, it's called copper. Jadi ini juga bisa disebut sebagai copper glands. Okay. So after accompanied by uh, the cement, the sperm will be come out from the penis to the outside of the body, melalui organ yang ada di dalam penis nih. Organ itu yang ini. Ada yang tahu ini organ apa? So the sperm cell and the semen and the urine too can uh, dikeluarkan dari saluran ini. So that's all about uh, inside organs of male reproductive system. Let's continue to the outside organs. Uh, there are two organs in uh, outside organs of male reproductive system. The first is penis and the second is scrotum. We cannot see the scrotum because scrotum is skin structure. And uh, this this models just show the inside organ. So I'm sorry because I can show I can show you uh, the scrotum. Apakah kalian memaafkan Miss? Yes, Miss. I have a brother, so I saw it before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the function of the penis is untuk mengalirkan urin dan sperma. Jadi ingat ini. Laki-laki hanya memiliki satu lubang untuk mengeluarkan urin dan sperma. Sementara scrotum, hmm, what is the function of scrotum? Can you tell me? To protect the testicle, miss. Yes, Laura. You are clever. The testis warm, miss. What? Sorry. To keep the testis warm. Yes, it can be the answer too. So, uh, the scrotum function is to protect the testicles. Seperti apa yang Laura bilang tadi, dan untuk mengontrol suhu, to control the temperature of the testicles, because testicles just can produce the sperm cells in special temperature. Jadi, uh, testis itu hanya bisa memproduksi sperma di temperatur 32 hingga 34 derajat Celcius, yang mana itu lebih rendah dari suhu tubuh uh, anak laki-laki pada umumnya. Jadi harus dikontrol deh oleh scrotum seperti itu. Let's continue to the next reproductive system, to the female reproductive system. So this is the female reproductive system. Jadi seperti inilah model atau seperti inilah posisi uh, dari sistem reproduksi perempuan uh, di dunia nyata seperti ini. Lucu ya, rahim itu seperti ruku, dalam posisi ruku gitu. Oke, okay, let's start uh, from the outside organ of this female reproductive system. The female reproductive system uh, dibatasi atau diawali dengan vulva. Vulva in bahasa kol celah. Jadi celah yang menghubungkan antara sistem reproduksi perempuan dan lingkungannya. Nah, vulva itu dibatasi serta uh, meliputi labium. There are, there are two types of labium. Uh, the first is uh, labia major and the second is labia minor. This is the labia major and this this is uh, the labia minor. Please tell me the function of labia major and labia minor. Mm, maybe. Oh, Safina. Yes, it's right. To protect the vagina and to cover the vagina, so there there uh, are not uh, strange things that can can enter the vagina. Jadi, uh, itulah fungsi untuk vulva untuk melindungi intinya. So let's continue to this uh, two hole the first hole is the little one this is urethra and the second is vagina this is uh, this is vagina jadi itulah perbedaan di antara perempuan dan laki-laki tadi di, per- di laki-laki kan hanya ada satu lubang untuk mengeluarkan urin dan juga sperma nah di perempuan itu there are two holes and um, 
Actually, Miss masih banyak menemukan remaja-remaja perempuan dan bahkan yang sudah dewasa yang tidak tahu bahwa ada dua lubang di uh, bagian genital kita yang fungsi itu berbeda. Yang satu untuk mengeluarkan urin dan yang satu untuk sistem uh, untuk organ reproduksi. Nah, yang kecil ini, this little one is to uh, mengeluarkan urin and connect it with this. This is urinary, this is urinary bladder. And uh, the vagina is a reproductive organ. So after this class, I hope you will you can uh, share this knowledge to your sister maybe or to your um, close friends. Jadi jangan lupa untuk menyebarkan ilmu-ilmu yang sederhana seperti ini tapi sangat bermanfaat. Jangan malu ya. Uh, don't be ashamed. Karena sistem reproduksi ini adalah sesuatu yang sangat penting. Karena uh, if we familiar with our reproductive system, we can decide and we can determine what is the right action to make our reproductive system still healthy, still clean, and uh, work as uh, the right function. Jadi itulah manfaat-manfaat yang dapat kita uh, dapatkan dari mempelajari sistem reproduksi. Okay, let's continue to this organs. Do you know what is this organs? This is? Penis? No. Okay, kita lihat dari sini. No. No, no. Almost, but no. This is still? Vagina. Yes, this is vagina. Thank you, Safina. And thank you, all of you. So, this is vagina, and the function of vagina is untuk mengeluarkan darah menstruasi and for a gate, gerbang masuknya sel sperma ke dalam tubuh seorang perempuan. Dari sini, before we continue to the next organ, I will inform you something important that every female in this world were birthed with a special structure called hymen. Hymen is a very thin layer and located near the vagina sangat dekat dengan lubang vagina. Hymen ini in bahasa uh, dikatakan sebagai selaput darah. And hymen has various characteristics based on their thickness, their elasticity, and their um, shapes. Jadi di antara satu perempuan dengan perempuan lainnya, itu hymennya akan berbeda karakteristiknya. Ada yang mudah rusak, ada yang elastis mungkin. Nah, but if we talk about hymen di uh, lingkungan luar secara umumnya, di masyarakat umum, ini masih menjadi topik yang sangat tabu. Because what? Jadi masih banyak orang yang mengaitkan hymen ini dengan sexual activity. Dan kalau misalkan ada hymen yang rusak, itu selalu disangkanya sebagai ah itu pasti karena seksual aktivitas seksual rusaknya karena aktivitas seksual but actually it's not right it's not true because uh, there there are various factors that can make hymen broken first terjatuh kalian kalau misalkan terjatuh dengan posisi terduduk misalkan itu berpotensi untuk merusak hymen kedua hmm, benturan keras ketiga infeksi dari mikroorganisme yang masuk ke dalam vagina. Keempat, aktivitas yang berat seperti yang dilakukan oleh para atlet perempuan. Nah, itu berpotensi juga untuk merusak hymen. So, I think it's not uh, right to judge people based on their hymen, but still we have to protect the hymen. Because if we protect our hymen, the hymen will protect us. Protect us from what? from negative activity like uh, sexual activity before the marriage or pergaulan bebas dan lain sebagainya yang memiliki dampak buruk bagi masa depan kita semua. So for the female, please protect your hymen with protect yourself and the for and for male, please help the female to protect their hymen. Caranya dengan apa? Kontrol diri. Jadi untuk perempuan jaga diri, untuk laki-laki kontrol diri kerja sama bekerja sama untuk uh, menjaga hal oke okay? oke okay? siap tidak siap nih oke okay. thank you so much 
uh, I know you can do it. So let's continue to the next organ. This organ is cervix, or in Bahasa, it called leherahim. You know what is called? Why this organ is called leherahim? Because the shape. Look at the shape. Bentuknya seperti leher manusia kan? Yang di bawahnya melebar, di tengahnya menyempit, ke atasnya melebar lagi. Jadi ini memang seperti leher, makanya ini sebagai sebagai leher rahim. And the function of uh, cervix is to support the female who is giving birth. Uh, agar kepala bayi itu bisa keluar dari perut ya dari maksudnya dari rahim gitu bisa keluar. Besides of that, the function of the cervix is uh, to lead the sperm cells to entering the uterus. Okay, so this is uterus. Please tell me anything that you know about uterus. Um, siapa ya? Saya akan pilih nih. Esa. Can you help me? Uh, it is for babies group, I think. Yes! Yes, it's right. So this is a chamber that uh, the function is for embryo to grow. Sebelum mereka nantinya akan dilahirkan sebagai bayi. There are uh, three layers of uterus. The outside layer called perimetrium. The middle layer called Myometrium and the inside layer called endometrium. Nah, di endometrium inilah plasenta bayi nantinya akan menerap seperti itu. So, uh, the next is we have uh, this. This is fallopian tube. Dan perempuan punya dua tuba falopi. Do you know that what is function of fallopian tube? Maybe um, Alexa? Apakah ada Alexa di sini? Wait, I will say. Oke, okay, Alexa, can you tell me what's the function of fallopian tube? Uh, can I say it in Bahasa? Yes, you can. Uh, I can coba fallopian lah, tempat Hebat sekali Alexa, pasti sudah bacain out ya. <laughs> so it's right, the function of fallopian tube is uh, to the place of fertilization. Dan disinilah kita pertama kali terbentuk. Disinilah pertama kali sperma dari ayah kita bertemu dengan ovum dari ibu kita. Uh, beside of that, the fallopian tube function is to connecting the uterus to the ovary. The next is infundibulum. Look at this. This is infundibulum. Infundibulum itu adalah organ yang bentuknya seperti corong yang dilengkapi dengan fimbria. Fimbria itu yang seperti jari-jari ini bentuknya. Look at your fingers. Gerakan jari-jari kalian. Nah, seperti itulah fimbria. And the function of infundibulum and fimbria is to catch the ovum yang dikeluarkan oleh ovarium and make sure the ovum will be entering the tubavian fallopi the fallopian tube, I'm sorry nah, jadi fungsi infundibulum itu untuk menangkap dan memastikan bahwa ovumnya masuk ke dalam tuba fallopi oke, okay, the last is ovary this is ovary if male has a couple of testicles female has a couple of ovaries Each of ovaries just can produce one functional of ovum. Berbeda ya, di laki-laki bisa memproduksi banyak sel sperma, kok di perempuan cuma bisa satu sih? Ada yang tahu kenapa? Penasaran tidak kalian? Penasaran tidak? Penasaran. Penasaran. Mau tahu jawabannya tidak? Tahu, tahu. Jadi, keep your curiosity. For the next weeks, because um, we can we will discuss about uh, the reason why is the uh, ovaries can just can produce one functional ovum. Di pertemuan selanjutnya di topik uh, cell uh, di, cell divisions and uh, gametogenesis. Okay. So beside to produce the ovum, uh, the ovaries produce the female reproductive hormone. Untuk anak perempuan, coba pegang kulit kalian. So short screen. Lembut ya? Lembut? 
lembut, kenyang. Nah, itu semua disebabkan karena hormon yang diproduksi oleh ovarium. Hormon ini disebut sebagai progesteron dan estrogen. Nah, jadi jika laki-laki punya testosteron, perempuan punya progesteron dan estrogen. So, that's all about uh, today's materials. Um, before we end this meeting, maybe any question? Apakah ada yang ditanyakan? Tidak. If there is no question, uh, I have a music video that can help you to remember about today's topics. Uh, Miss menyiapkan sebuah musik video yang akan membantu kalian untuk merecall kembali materi-materi hari ini. Kalian mau nonton tidak? Mau? Oh. Mau. Oh, yes, of course, please. Okay, let's watch it together. But I'm sorry before because my voice is not good. <laughs> But uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Sudah terlihat share screen-nya belum? Okay, oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry, tadi belum dinyalakan soundnya, sudah terlihat lagi? Sudah. Kalian bisa ikut bernyanyi bersama ya, nadanya Miss ambil dari sebuah lagu populer yang mungkin kalian semua tahu.
kelenjar prostat dan juga kelenjar koper kelenjar koper atau buru uh, after this uretra penis and scrotum and the female reproductive system consists vulva uh, labium vagina cervix uh, uterus fallopian tube and ovary So all of uh, these organs has their own function, and we have to protect that function agar berjalan dengan semestinya dan untuk seterusnya. Because our productive system is our future. Kita akan meneruskan gen kita, generasi kita, kan anak kita melalui sistem reproduksi kita. So that's all from for, from me. Don't forget to check your Edmodo and don't forget to learn about uh, cell division and uh, gametogenesis before the next class. I'm sorry if there are any mistakes. Thank you for your attention. I hope uh, after this you have a good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you guys. It's okay, Santina. It's okay. Uh, I'm record this uh, video so you can watch it uh, in your home after this. 